So the original Xbox for many was the first console that they experienced online gaming. I know it was for me when I played Halo way back in the day. It was something magical about playing games online with your friends that weren't physically there and using some kind of split screen. So I guess the original Xbox really did introduce people to online gaming and online communities around gaming. So this console has a special place in my heart, but unfortunately trying to play retro consoles in 2025 is a bit of a pain. So I'm going to fix that just like I did with the Dreamcast and the PS2. If you haven't seen those Ultimate Dream builds yet, go click up there somewhere because we've already covered the PS2 and the Dreamcast. And next up, you've guessed it, is the original Xbox. Now I've already done a couple of modifications to my Crystal Xbox and I actually got it off Facebook Marketplace with a dead laser. The console was boxed with the Crystal controller but unfortunately the laser wouldn't read games anymore but I didn't care about that because I knew what I was going to be doing with it and I got it super cheap. I think I paid about 60 bucks for it, about £40. Absolute bargain. So as I says, I've already done a couple of upgrades and they are, I put the SATA to IDE conversion so we can use a newer hard drive. And of course, I put a four terabyte hard drive in there. So this is the chip that I originally had in here. Now I have now obviously taking this out in favor of another one so first of all we can have a look at all the parts that we're going to need for this build and of course this video is sponsored by JLC PCB because they actually made the PCB for the mod chip because it's actually using an RP2040. But we'll go into more detail as we look at all the parts needed. So let's jump over to the top down camera and take a look at all that now. So first of all, we're gonna tackle getting HDMI out of the Xbox. Now I've seen a really cool project where you can take one of these Wii to HDMI adapters take the connectors off and then use these adapter boards that I ordered from JLC PCB, of course the sponsor of today's video. And while we're at it, let's get some PCBs made for the RP2040. This is going to be our mod chip and these are designed by Modsville USA. I'll put a link to his channel and GitHub in the description below. Now of course this is a really cheap open source alternative that's going to add a ton of features. Last but not least, we have a Pico 2W, and this is going to allow us to use Bluetooth controllers on the Xbox like the PS5 DualSense. Now, of course, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, bringing your ideas to life in their state-of-the-art facility. They have experts on hand that can check over your files, make sure everything's okay. They also 3D print in resin, nylon, etc. They do CNC machining. They pretty much cover everything to get all your projects done. They're fast, reliable and very competitive on pricing. But how easy is it to order? Just drag and drop your Gerber file across give it a chance to load. As you can see, these are those Modsville RP2040 chips. We're going to choose black because I just think it's a really cool color compared to the bog standard green. You get loads of options like quantity and thickness, but for five of these boards, it's only two dollars. Now the shipping says $21.50. We don't need them that fast. Global standard shipping. Total price $3.50. Gonna show you something really cool now. If you click on the PCB, click 3D, you can have a 3D look at the actual board itself. And this is really handy, especially when designing PCBs. You can see it's got Modsville USA on it. So again, I'll put a link in the description below. So for more information and the latest offers, check the link in the description below. So thanks again to JLC for sponsoring this video. Your support is greatly appreciated and projects like this just wouldn't be possible without them. So we have our plan, we have all the parts. 
Well, near enough all the parts. We need to use the Bamboo Lab H2S to get some 3D prints done and that's going to be used to relocate the hard drive and of course add those 80mm fans. So let's get those printed off first and then we can start putting everything together and I can start enjoying Halo again. So as we see these parts come to life on the Bamboo Lab H2S printer, I just wanted to talk about their printers for a moment. I'm not sponsored. This isn't a sponsor segment. This is just my honest opinion about these printers. They're absolutely fantastic. I've tried Elegoo printers in the past. Too much messing about, too much messing with settings. Get yourself a Bamboo Lab, even the A1 Mini is just an absolute amazing beginner printer and they're super cheap, under $200. Now of course it's time to take apart the Xbox and we're going to speed through this. You can see the SATA adapter there, we can see the old microchip, but we need to get this stripped all the way down to the actual motherboard itself. Now to swap the chip out it's actually super easy. Unplug the old one and there is a single wire connecting this so we are going to get rid of that and plug the new one in. Nice and easy. Obviously, if you don't have a chip in there already, you're going to have to solder the headers on, but that's actually quite an easy thing to do. Now, there is some wires underneath, and we do need to make a couple of changes here for this chip. Uh, if you have a look on Modsville's uh, GitHub page, which of course I'll put in the description below, you will see all the connections and all the points that you need to go to. So as you can see, I'm going to be soldering a wire from the ground and I forget what this point's called, but after talking to a friend of mine, I says, do I need this wire? And there's two different locations you can put it in. He basically says, are you ever going to boot to stock? And I said, no. So he's like, yeah, just ground it. So I think this is something to do with the, the CPU clock or I'm, I'm probably chatting bubbles here, but this was one that I decided that I'm never actually going to boot to stock again. So let's just do the easy one. Let's just ground it. So we're using some enamel wire or magnet wire. And I really like this wire because it doesn't matter if they touch and cross because it's got the enamel to protect it. And then it's just a case of heating it up to strip the enamel off and then make a nice connection like this D0 point, which is the one that we took off the other chip. Next up, we're going to heat up that AV port because we're actually going to get rid of it. So hot airflow workstation. I've got this for about $40 off Amazon. 400 degrees and some flux. We can just heat it up and then get rid of this port. Got some capped on tape to protect some of the other components. We're going to use some solder wick and we're just going to clean those points up. Now these are all the, the connection holes and that they, they are actually through holes. We can see the pins on that connection. I'm not going to get all the solder from out of the holes. Uh, I know that would look nicer, but it's going to be covered up. We've got that Wii to HDMI adapter here. Now we don't need the Wii connection, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then we're just going to clean up all these points as well. Isopropyl alcohol is your friend, just to make sure everything's nice and clean and tidy. So in the instructions, and again, there'll be a GitHub below, these two resistors need to be bridged together. And I believe this tells the Xbox that it's connected to a component cable I want to say component cable now with the adapters there's two adapter PCBs right now you've got the V 1.6 and then I think the other one is V to cover the other models there's, there's three all together but as I've got the 1.6 we're going to use the 1.6 one for obvious reasons now this is going to line up and we're actually going to solder it to the board and that's going to keep it in place now i did put the screws in because they recommended putting the screws in to line it all up and that's gonna just basically hold it 
so it doesn't move around as you are soldering it. We've got a few points to solder here. I think there was about six or seven in total. Some of them are a little bit tricky, like these ones you see on screen right now. They, they were a little bit awkward because the solder's got to flow down and make a connection, a solid connection to the motherboard itself. But if you use leaded solder and really good flux, I use MG Chemicals and Kester solder. Unfortunately, you can't really get leaded solder in the UK, so you have to get it imported from America. But that is definitely the best way if, if you've got crappy tools and unleaded solder it's just going to make your life so much more difficult now these three blue components here they basically represent rgb so the red green blue for the video signal again you can see that these were a little bit difficult to get connected and if you had a soldering tip that was a bit thinner it it might make it a little bit easier now we only have a few more connections to make and this next one was even trickier but we had to have the board sort of up on an angle and we're kind of looking through it on an angle to try and get these four connections done again it did actually go through pretty well. I did do a circuit test to make sure that they were all connected. And then we have the five volts and this R point to do. They did actually show in the instructions, just bridging it with a lot of solder. But to be honest, I think it's better to use some wire because that would just be a mess. So we've got the HDMI adapter in there, so we're ready to test it out. I did test it all and the picture quality was amazing. So I was really happy with that and I decided not to show any of the footage for the Bluetooth adapter, that Raspberry Pi Pico 2W because I'm having quite a lot of problems with it and it's not staying connected. So. I'm going to revisit that in a later video so I just thought well there's not much point showing you that because I can't get it working at the minute and that's using the OGX mini software so I do need to have a look at it. So we're putting the Xbox back together we've got those 3D prints and unfortunately we did lose a little bit of footage of putting the fans in. To be honest it wasn't that difficult and as you can see they look really good. Now software wise we're going to be using XBMC for gamers and this was a little bit difficult to install. There's plenty of videos out there already going over everything but this is what we're going to use. I've used a 4 terabyte hard drive and when I say it's full of games it really is full of games. I think I've got every game released in the UK on this thing which is pretty cool but of course there's only one game I really want to play and that's Halo. This really does bring back memories. I remember playing this on a Saturday night with all my friends on Xbox Live and then of course we had Halo 2 as well. It was just so much nostalgia is flowing through me right now. This, this game is just what really got me into online gaming. Now, of course, we did test some other games. We've got Colin McRae Rally here, and this was another classic back in the day. I know they did carry on the franchise for a bit. And then we have Need for Speed Underground. This is when Need for Speed games were actually really good. Doing up the cars, and I remember watching the first Fast and the Furious film and playing this game. They just went together so well. Now we've got Dave Mira BMX, of course we had Tony Hawks, etc, etc. There's just so many good games. Now unfortunately I did run into a couple of snags. For example, the OGX Mini, the Raspberry Pi Pico W2 that deals with the Bluetooth controllers. I'm having a problem with that. Whatever controller I connect to it, it does work but after about 10 minutes it disconnects. That's why the switch is hanging out the front. 
so I can power cycle the Pico, the OGX Mini, so I can then connect the controller again. This is really annoying and it can't stay like that. It's unplayable if you ask me. The second thing is I really wanted to add one of those LCD screens on the front. So a friend of mine, Acid Repairs, thank you very much for sending one of these LCD screens that everyone's using in the original Xboxes and they sit in the front. Now, unfortunately, this needs a lot more modification than I originally thought. I thought you'd cut the front panel for this to fit in, 3D print some brackets or surrounds and hey presto. But unfortunately, where the power board is, there's quite a few wires going to it. That plug sticks out too much. So what you gotta do is cut the plug off and then solder all the wires directly to the power board. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to go through all this. And as I was still trying to work out the issues with the OGX Mini, I just felt like I'm gonna stop here and then we can revisit this later because I am planning on doing another video for this. And what I'll do in the follow up video is I'll add more RGB. I'll add the LCD. We'll swap out that four terabyte mechanical hard drive for an SSD and we will fix the Bluetooth controllers. Whether we stay with OGX Mini or move over to Retro Blue with an ESP32 like we did with the Dreamcast, I don't know yet, but we will get that fixed. So we will have a follow up to this video. So if you don't wanna miss that follow up video, please consider subscribing and then you'll get notified when that video gets released. If you have any insight or feedback on this project, do you know of any other Bluetooth adapter projects so I can get Bluetooth running on this? Is there anything that you would have done differently? Let me know in the comments below. So if you do enjoy my videos, you know what to do by now. Like, subscribe and then hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future projects. I'm JP, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.